Okay, we're here with Lawrence Okoye. Is that right? Have I said that right, Lawrence? Excellent, because you're a big guy. I don't want to fall foul of you. Um, And you are the British discus champion, which is is pretty impressive. But what is more impressive is that you only really started doing it seriously last year. Uh, You have a place deferred at Oxford University where you will or will not be reading law. Uh, And you're a pretty good rugby player as well. Uh, um, Opportunities with Isha, um, won the Daily Mail Cup at your school. So um, it's been a, for a young lad, you've packed a lot in, haven't you? You could say that, yeah. Um, I love my sport. I've been playing lots of different sports since I was a young kid. Uh, I played tennis when I was younger, Uh, a bit of basketball when I was at Wiki, if you know. I loved football when I was growing up. Um, I got a chance to play rugby, obviously, at Whitgift, and I loved my time there playing that sport, and um, obviously I'm throwing the discus now. Yeah, now before we get onto the discus, now, uh, as anybody can see, you are a big old lump, okay? And you played on the wing, you don't look like a winger, you look like a forward, but you played on the wing. Yeah. You could run the 100 metres in what? Sub 11, 10 line. Right, and if you don't mind me asking, how big are you? Um, 6 foot 6, 132 kilos. Uh, 132, 21 stone. And that's pretty much what you were as a, as a winger? Yeah, just a bit less, probably 20 and a half. So. Oh, lightweight then, weren't you? <laughs> In your final year at school, at a very high level, because you won the Daily Mail Cup, didn't you? What was your try tally? Uh, I scored 26 tries in 24 games. So you basically just passed the ball out to the big guy on the wing? Yeah. And you used to run through people? Yeah, we, we scored some, some good tries back in the day. Yeah. We had that Marlon Yard and Elliot Daly inside me, so it was made quite easy. So the plan was... I guess, to become a rugby player. I mean, you, you have this place, you, you've got yourself this place at Oxford, but um, there was a place there at Isha for you. You were in London Irish Academy, but a place at Isha, who in the championships are pretty good standard. Mm. The plan was to work your way up into the premiership, and then, who knows? Yeah, that was the plan. And, um, I was looking forward to, you know, start my year playing professional rugby. But the discus came along and I, you know, rocketed up in the sport and, I thought, and my coach thought, and the people around me thought that it was a big opportunity for me to to get to the Olympics, obviously, in, in two years, which was obviously a mean feat in itself, but there was a chance for me to do that, and they wanted me to, they said, they suggested I do it, and I thought I should, and I, luckily I went with it. Well, hold on a minute, you said the discus came along, okay, now, you, at school, you were, you were the best at the school, but not because you particularly knew how to throw it, it's just because you were big and strong, yeah? Yeah. And you, you, you competed at a decent level, didn't you? Yeah, I like, um, came second in English schools. Um, I, I, was, I, was, I was just a big guy, obviously. I had okay, I, I wouldn't call it okay now, but by those standards, okay technique. So I could throw a reasonable distance, but having that you know, top level coach really took me to the next level. But there were no plans, were there, for you to become a full-time athlete? You just did it in the summer because that's what you did, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. this was just my summer routine. I'll just do throw some discus, have some fun, you know, mess around a bit, do the English schools, mess around in English schools and come back and start playing rugby again. And then something happened, didn't it? What You did one thing, tell me about this this, this story, that, that changed, that it made everybody's eyes open. Yeah, I like, just, um, my friend threw, uh, my friend Zane Dukeman, he threw 56 metres in the, in the discus and I, I just didn't, think that was possible. I was really shocked. I was like, how did you do it? And he helped me out here. And he's, he gave me his coach's number and I joined his coach. And six weeks later, I am throwing um, the second furthest in the world for the you know, 20 age group. Second in the world for that year. And you were pretty gobsmacked yourself by that, I would have thought. Yeah, I, I didn't expect to improve as quickly as I did. And John John expected me to improve quickly. You know, he, he always has. That's John, your coach, John Hillier. John, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I, I achieved a lot in that first year, so I thought, hey, let's give it a go. You're a Londoner, you're, you're a Croydon boy, and uh, it's pretty handy that uh, the Olympics happen to be in your home city of London. So yeah. that played a major part, didn't it, in you deciding to, well, in effect, turn, you, turn your back on rugby and, and go for the athletics? Yeah, it did. If the, game, if the games hadn't been in London, I don't think I would be, I'd be doing what I'm doing now. But, you know, that's... That's the legacy of the games, and that's something that you know, we've all got to embrace. And it's, I'm, I'm glad that's happened. You know, we see lots of young athletes coming through, and that must be their motivation as well. So, the games coming to London was a big deal for me, and I'm, I'm glad that they've come because obviously I'm doing well. It seems amazing to think that uh, with a little bit of luck, you'll be thrown for Britain inside the, uh, the Olympic Stadium, 80,000 people primarily cheering for you. And because and only five minutes ago, you, you, you picked up a discus and, and threw it, but that's 
that's the reality, isn't it? And I guess now you've got to, you're still so raw, so you've got to pack in the, the tournaments. But already you're, what, your, your best throw places you were in the top 10 in the world, isn't it? Yeah, I was uh, ranked ninth last year in the world, uh, which is obviously a great achievement. And I'm uh, really pleased to have done that. And it's, just, it's just good for me just to see that I can achieve you know, a, a lot in the sport at a young age. And that's a big deal for me because I don't want to be one of those people that follow you know, bog standard bog standard trend and you do the same things everybody else has done and you, you achieve you know, slowly. Well, that's, that's not my style. I like to do things at my speed which tends to be fast and um, hopefully I can keep, keep moving up the ladder and keep this linear progression going. Now I was going to say you're a lucky boy but you're not because you've created your own luck but the reality is here you are with a few months away from the Olympics you've got hopefully the Olympic Games to look forward to. Then you've got a bit of a dilemma because, you know, what happens after that? Uh, do you continue as a full-time athlete? Well, you're pretty good. Or do you decide to take up your place at St. Peter's College, Oxford, to read law? It's a dilemma, but it's a nice dilemma. Yeah, I, I'm incredibly lucky to have, you know, the, option, the options that I have. And, you know, I, I went to South Africa um, this winter for more weather training, just seeing, you know, some of the, some of the poverty there makes you think and appreciate what's going on in your life and you know, this is an unbelievable dilemma I'm, I'm very happy to have that to have th this problem if you want to call it a problem but um, yeah like you said I, I've created my own like in, in a sense but you know these people didn't these people that I saw in South Africa didn't ask to be where they are so I'm very lucky and I don't I have no intention of not taking my opportunities and I will take every opportunity that I get and make sure that I achieve everything I want to um, I'm not going to be one of those people that should have, would have, could have. I'll be that person that did. So it's going to be a good year. Now, and here's the thing, uh, Lawrence, you, you are only 20. Now, the laws of uh, sport, you know, are near your, your, your best in terms of your age and your, and your development. Um, you are probably not even completely fully developed physically yet. So I would assume, with a fair wind, there's at least a couple of Olympics in you. Beyond, beyond London, and well, technically, your peak's some way off, isn't it? Yeah, well, the, well they say that the discus throwers tend to peak at late 20s, early 30s, and um, one of the best discus throwers now is actually 39, he's been throwing for over 20 years. And that is? Uh, Virgilius Aletna from Lithuania. Right. Um, double Olympic, double world champion, throwing the second furs in the world ever. Right. So, you know, if, if you still did it at 39, then I don't know what I'll be doing then. But I, I tell you what, you've just revealed there something else about you. You are a bit of a student, aren't you? Yeah. Of uh, you maybe you should go to Oxford to study discus because <laughs> because yeah. you know your, your discus throws and um, uh, you've been training very recently with one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Uh, who is Jürgen Schult? So what did you get out of Jürgen Schult? Yeah, he, he was very good. He, he didn't he didn't keep things to himself. He was very he was very open and gave lots of good advice about training methods and the way I should structure everything and actual technical advice as well. So that was really worthwhile. And that was a great weekend. But it's important for anyone who wants to be successful in anything. They have to do their homework and you can't expect to go to an exam and expect to do well. You haven't done your homework. So it's the same thing for me. I've got a, look around and see what's out there and see what needs to be done to be, be the best at throwing a discus. So it's important to go on YouTube and look at these guys and important to get to as many presentations as you can. Okay, Lance, well listen, this is great to meet you. Congratulations so far on what you've There's achieved. There's a lot more to do. There's a lot more to do, my friend, yes, but you've, you've made a good start and have a great next few months and uh, very much look forward to seeing you at the Olympics. Thanks very much. I'll see you there.